In our ideas for profit today, we'll discuss about Vidhi Speciality Food Ingredients, which has had a strong transformation in the operational performance in the last few years. Also, earlier the company had a high share of revenue from its trading business. Now, its business largely depends on the manufacturing of colors of foods and of personal care as well. Now, further, it is consistently adding the high margin products to its portfolio as well. Now, let's focus on all the parameters to find out if investors should keep this stock on their radar. Well, the Q1 performance was a blip, through, um, though a strong improvement in margins was definitely recorded in Q1. The sales declined uh, by 22% year-on-year, and that was on account of the production suspensions warranted by the lockdown due to COVID-19, and also the disruptions caused by the Nisagra cyclone. Export sales were also adversely affected by the limited functioning of the JNPT port. Also, having said that, due to the lower raw material costs and the higher reliance on the manufactured goods, uh, you see the gross margins expand by say 268 basis points year on year. EBITDA margins expanded also by 122 basis points partially weighed by the operating uh, deal leverage as well. Now the company has been consistently following the strategy of lowering the reliance on the traded sales and replacing it with the sales through the own manufacturing goods. Additionally, it has also pursued to bottleneck, uh, de-bottleneck uh, a lot of initiatives which has increased the production efficiency to about 300 tons per month. In parallel, the sales of the pro manufactured goods also has jumped by 80% in the last four years, which definitely point towards the enhanced product mix that the company has. Impact of these changes can be seen uh, for the operating margin, which is up 700 basis points in the last four years. In the recently held AGM, the management also updated that the company is undergoing capex worth 90 crore rupees, which will increase the capacity from the present 3600 tons to about 9000 tons per annum. Now at the peak capacity utilization, these investments should definitely help the company clock in about 700 crore rupees of a turnover. Now, the company's net debt as of 31st of March 2020 is lower by 27% compared to the level that was seen in FY19. Its net debt to equity ratio is at 0.14x and is down from 0.26x in FY18. Now, while all of these provide scope to raise funds for expansion, the management is quite hopeful that the internal accruals should definitely take care of the large part of the CAPEX funding. Now, the company is also investing behind the backward uh, integration as well. And so far, the two key raw materials are now captively produced and the company also plans to add two more ingredients for the in-house manufacturing alone. Now, this is important because the company uh, quite uh, relies on China for about 55% of the raw material requirements currently. Now, in the near term, an improvement uh, in the product makes the lower share of trading business and also the backward integration together are expected to improve the earnings also going forward. Now, operating margins should definitely remain uh, north of, say, 20%. However, the margin expansion beyond 24% would be contingent on the KPX plans and uh, wherein the company really plans to manufacture more value added products. Now execution risk for the major capex remains a definite watch out for the um, coming quarters and coming to valuations after the recent run up that we've seen in the stock is quite um, opti optically quite expensive. The EV2 EBITDA of 9.9x uh, for FY22 estimated earnings is quite high. However, we acknowledge the true potential of the company will express only after the expansion and it will take about three to five years to witness the same. And hence, the investors with high risk appetite can definitely consider this opportunity.